and pain and more support of your values and challenge, uh, what happens is you accelerate time and shrink space. And whenever you're seeing more pain and pleasure, more challenge and support, you tend to elongate space and increase time. So you, you, you stretch time out, you decelerate it, if you will. So you're distorting the fabric of space-time with your emotions, but love dissolves the fabric of space-time and allows you ever present without boundary. So love, is love is the essence. As uh, Wheeler, John Archibald Wheeler, re recently I was at the Institute of Advanced Studies there and meeting with Freeman Dyson, who's Professor Emeritus there. He's taken over Albert Einstein's position. Across the hall from him is Witten and also Wheeler. And Wheeler basically said, in, when he used to be at the University of Texas in Austin, I have his notes, he said that the universe is nothing but love, and it's all light. And when the human mind awakens to the love and light that's ever present, it sees and is graced by the magnificence of the universe. When you meet somebody, a beautiful girl, and you're infatuated, you understand? Infatuated. Oh. <sighs> when you're infatuated, you're addicted. Dopamine. You can't get them out of your mind. You fantasize. You think. <clears throat> but then, you spend time with them. You find out they are not your fantasy. They're a beautiful woman with a pair of opposite traits. Nice, mean, kind, cool, giving, taking, close, distant, a pair of opposites. Your infatuation wanes, and then you withdraw. They're not my fantasy. Then you resent them. This is not an inspiring dream. This is a fantasy. No woman or man deserves to be infatuated and then resented. But every man and woman deserves to be loved. When you have a goal, if you are at first elated, infatuated, it's wise to look at the downsides and make sure it's real for you. Because otherwise you'll get endorphins and you'll get excited. And then when you start to go after it and discover the challenges, you'll wane. Make sure your goals have a balance or otherwise they're fantasies and delusions that will torture you and you'll feel gullible afterwards. But some people love creating ideas and delegating actions to others to implement them. I know some people that have many companies that other people run. They're idea people. They're great, ingenious idea generators. If you were this individual and you're inspired by it, but you don't like the management and the details, then surround yourself with people who do would love to do that and partner with people to help you fulfill goals that you inspired and can delegate and get done and go on to the next one. So make sure it's something you're inspired by and don't give up on it or delegate it. Thank you. Well, since I, I perceive things from a complementation of opposites, uh, it's actually got amazing order in it. But everybody who has different levels of awareness of that will take whatever it is that they see that's out of order based on their emotions and their values and try to add to a transformation. But there will always be somebody with an equal and opposite value system to dance with them, to create a complementation. And the person who can see the hidden order that's sitting in all that will love everybody for their dance and will see that there is a magnificence going on that we're all participating in. Everybody has a place and we're all learning about loving the whole picture. And so I think the universe is doing quite well. And, uh, but humans are just not uh, quite aware of that. <laughs> I always say it's like the flea and the dog trying to tell the dog what to do. But at the same time, that uh, we, it's not here to take credit or blame for what's going on in the universe. Since it's doing so magnificently, we're here to just learn to love the universe. And as we appreciate and love the universe, magic starts happening. But I, I always say when people ask me, well, what do you think, where's the world going? And I said, if a person is a leader, they don't ask that. If a person's a follower, they're always asking that. I say take, take ownership of your true leadership that's always present and you decide where you want to take the world. It's up to you. Believe you have the capacity to transform the world.
Because once we empower all areas of our life, the victim mentality dissolves. Gratitude and love empowers the areas of life. Fear and guilt constricts it. There are seven primary fears that hold people and shrink people. I'd like to share these, these fears. The first fear that stops you from acknowledging and, and emanating your purpose and your dream is the fear of breaking the morals and ethics of some spiritual authority. Somebody you've given power to, subordinated to, other than your own soul. Albert Einstein said, my contempt for authority is what made me one. I stand in no one's shadows, but I stand on the shoulders of great giants. We often subordinate ourselves and minimize ourselves to people who we think have something that we don't. We're often too humble to admit our greatness. But greatness we have. And it is awaiting for us to acknowledge it. Our physiology soars with vitality the moment we do. Our enthusiasm becomes magnetic to the people to help us do it the moment we don't shrink and allow ourselves to shine. The second fear is a fear that you're not intelligent enough. You don't have a degree. You're not creative or imaginative enough. But the truth is you are. Even though I was a high school dropout and I didn't know how to read, I followed my intuition to come to Mexico. I learned much on this trip. Why? It's so important. I learned that when you, whatever you really truly need becomes provided. Because as I went through Mexico, there was always somebody there to assist. Nothing is ever missing in our life, but sometimes it's in a form that we don't easily see. When my parents dropped me off on the freeway when I left home, different people became mother and father surrogates. I even dated an older woman it was kind of a mixture of a girlfriend and mother figure. I learned a lot from her. I won't give details. <laughs> but I learned that we're not here to live only in fear. That if we walk with vision, that our fears dissolve before our eyes. But the fear sometimes that not being smart enough, intelligent enough, creative enough can immobilize us and make us lie to ourselves about our real capacity and make us shrink away from taking actions that inspire. The third fear is a fear of failure. The fear that we're not going to succeed at our endeavor. If we have the fear of failure, then we feel stupid, and then we feel wrong. And then they compound those three together, and then we lie to ourselves about our dream. We say, oh, it's not really important. But the truth is, it's our destiny. The fourth fear is the fear of lack of money, the fear of loss of money, the fear we're not going to make money. It can immobilize us. It can make us stay stagnant in a job that does not inspire us. 
People who are not doing what they love and loving what they do have Monday morning blues, Wednesday hump days, thank God it's Fridays, and week friggin' ends. But a person who discovers what they love to do and figures out a plan of action to go do it, every day is a day of the sun. A day of gratitude. I rarely know what day it is. I travel full time. This year I will be speaking 425 speeches. I just found out two more today in from Cairo, 427 speeches this year. If I could arrange it, I would do 500. I was just told the other day that I may have gotten the Guinness Book of World Records for speaking. The reason I go city to city so often, <laughs> because once they find I'm in the city, I have to move on. <laughs> People ask me, where do I live? I tell people, the universe is my playground. The world is my home. Every country's another room in the house. And every city is another platform to share my soul and heart with people. I once did healing with my hands. And I used to work in an office where I would adjust people. And then I hired doctors and I taught them. And then I started training doctors. Then I started teaching people in many fields. But I'm still a healer. Because I believe every time you walk away with one inspiring idea, you heal your life. Because every time you do what you love and love what you do, your body fuels itself and heals itself. Your body is creating signs and symptoms as a feedback system to yourself, to your consciousness, to guide you to be appreciative and to love everything you have not been appreciative and loving. The moment you do, your body rewards you with vitality. The fears that I'm mentioning sap the tree of life. They mobilize what's destined to be mobilized. So that fourth fear, the fear of loss of money, can immobilize people. The fifth fear is the fear of the loss of loved ones or the respect of loved ones. We're afraid, what will people think in our family? But if you look carefully in your life, you'll find out that somebody in your family is like your opposite. Your brother and sister are doing everything that you value less. Whatever's lowest on your value becomes higher on their value. They, dedicated to what they are, makes you possible, and you to them. They're not right or wrong, and neither are you, though everyone with their values thinks they're right and others wrong, unwisely. But the fear of loss of loved ones and the respect of loved ones can immobilize you. The next fear is the fear of rejection. The fear of rejection from somebody you've given power to. Somebody who thinks their opinion is more important than yours. It can stop you from doing something that's really amazing. I have so many things that I love to share with people. If I held back what is inside my 